What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Ari. Welcome back to AM Island Vibes. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing all right myself. Can't complain. Today, I'm here back with another reaction video. Today's reaction is going to be top 10 most shocking court moments caught on tape. If you guys are new to the channel, smash the like button, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff down below in the comment section, and I'll try my best to get on to it. If you guys want me something to react to, that is, you know, with that. But with that being said, let's get into the video. The content in this video may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey YouTube, Jim here. Welcome to Top 10 Archive. The courtroom may be one of the worst melting pots of emotion, often mixing the impassioned sense of justice, primal rage, and heartbreaking sorrow. From this brew comes the worst of insane tirades, physical outbursts, and moments of raw emotion. Detailed in this installment of the 10 most insane courtroom moments caught on camera. Before we get to- I got a question. I don't know if y'all know this old saying, they were saying that uh, when your right hand itching, the palm of your right hand itching, that mean you money coming. Is it your right or your left hand? Let me know. No, because my right hand itching me. And they say um, if your left hand is one hand, one hand mean you're going to get some money, and next hand mean you're going to give away some money. I feel that like they say my right palm itches so that they're going to get me some money. I don't want to scratch it. It started. Help us out by hitting that like button and be sure to leave us a comment because we're always looking to engage in interesting conversations with you. Also, don't forget to click the bell so you get notified every time we put out a new video. Number 10, Nicole Babb bears all. There's no telling what could happen in court. And though this moment of weirdness occurred in a bond courtroom, it's well worth mentioning. While waiting in line to discuss the nature of her appearance with a Miami-Dade County judge, a woman identified as Nicole Babb decided the humidity was just too much to handle. Undoing what looked like a makeshift hospital gown, Babb disrobed and proceeded to get down on all fours in front of her onlookers. Now the court bailiffs weren't really the quickest to respond, but they did eventually get her dressed before escorting her away. Number 9, May 1st, 1776. To most, it's a random day in the late 18th century. Yeah. But for people like Titus Nathan Colbert, it's a momentous date. During his court appearance for firing a weapon at San Diego police officers in Bankers Hill, Colbert showed his devotion to the Illuminati and the New World Order by repeatedly shouting the date, May 1st, 1776. May 1st, 1776. What's that date? May 1st, 1776. The date the Bavarian Illuminati was allegedly formed. Prior to standing before the judge, Colbert can be seen mouthing the word Illuminati. But once it came time to hear his sentence, he became vocally disruptive before being removed from the courtroom. Number 8. Ignorant. Michael Gaines Potty Mouth. We have to question the tactic being employed by Michael Gaines as he slung obscenity after obscenity at District Judge Rebecca Pilshaw during his sentencing. You ain't got to scream at me. You, oh. you gonna raise your voice at me? Oh my God. You raise your voice at me, I raise my voice at you. You just in a row. The HIV positive defendant was convicted of battery after spitting on two sheriff's deputies at the Sedgwick County Jail. Yeah. But if his R-rated rant indicates anything, Gaines feels there's a bit of injustice on hand. Okay. The words were that you deliberately were hawking us. Bullsh**. I didn't hawk up no saliva, okay? That's bullsh**. And you're gonna believe those lies. After calmly expressing himself, Gaines was removed from the courtroom, of course, ensuring he threw in a few final words. Stupid. And was sentenced to 13 years in prison. Oh, shit. Number seven, Butts and Cunningham joint sentencing. Considering the heinous crime that Erica Mae Butts and Shanita Latrice Cunningham committed in 2009, the life terms they each received sounds fitting. Of course, the defendants, who were found guilty of the wrongful death of three-year-old Serenity Richardson, didn't take the news too well. Circuit Judge Deidre Jefferson took no pity on Butts and Cunningham, who both collapsed to the floor at the reading of their sentence. Sentence to the State Department of Corrections for a period of life. Oh, man. Following their off-camera collapse, a loud shrill filled the courtroom. A cry for mercy undeserved for the two killers. As the two were wheeled out, catatonic, Bud's his mother was physically removed for her hysterics. Number six, the courtroom mixtape. If all else fails, try to woo them, right? At his sentencing for wrongful imprisonment and carrying a concealed weapon, 21-year-old... Hey! 
What's that bullshit charge? Concealed weapon. What's that mean? Is it when you have a concealed weapon? That's like when you hide it or something? Can somebody, somebody please explain the concealed weapon charge to me? I feel like that's bullshit. Earl well, I don't know. It's like I just feel like it's bullshit. Taylor pulled out all the stops when he opted to use his time for a statement to sing to the courtroom. Yeah, I wanna say I'm sorry. I remember this point. For the things I've done. Yeah, he boy. showed off his musical and lyrical prowess using Adele as his inspiration to apologize to the judge, his mother, and the victim. That's what's so up. My mother, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. Hope you're doing good, bro. To the victim, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. In a strange twist, Judge Darlene O'Brien was so moved by the rendition that she threw the charges out. What? Nah, we're kidding. He was found guilty and sentenced <laughs> to up to 15 years for the unlawful imprisonment and two years for the concealed weapon. Shit. Number five, the Hollingsworth Fracas. Slightly displeased with his court-appointed lawyer, defendant Wendell Hollingsworth is facing the spin. gavel for robbing churches across Columbus, Ohio in 1992. Huh? I don't think I hear that right. No, no. I, no. I think we, we ain't hearing right. Let's go back. Hold up. Earth Frankus. Slightly displeased with his court-appointed lawyer, I'm defendant here. Wendell Hollingsworth, who was facing the gavel for robbing churches across Columbus, Ohio in 1992. Oh, I thought he was robbing the churches with a gavel. Because <laughs> I was just about to say, sorry, God, but if, 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 if he was robbing the churches with a gavel, uh, no, Lord, God, please forgive me. But I think they deserve to get robbed because you let a guy. You know what? Let me take that back. God, well, please forgive me. But no, you know what I mean? That's what I thought it was. Staying during his day in court in 2007. Once wheeled up to his attorney, Hollingsworth kicked him, but was immediately Ooh. subdued by nearby deputies. In the melee, defense attorney J. Scott Wiseman cut his hand, and one deputy was accidentally tasered. <laughs> returned to the courtroom later, this time restrained with a spit shield cover over his mouth. For this unholy escapade, dubbed a reign of terror by Judge Julie M. Lynch, the feisty criminal received 93 years. Give it to me now. I feel bad. I feel bad. Number four, Keeson Wilkins' heart attack. Ah, the old I'm coming, Elizabeth defense. I'm dying. I was watching this the other day. Then 33-year-old Keeson Wilkins had decided to represent himself during his retrial for a 2004 assault, felony weapon possession, and for discharging a weapon in a habitation. The trial was a circus to say the least, but the icing on the cake of justice unfolded while Wilkins was cross-examining a deputy. Realizing that his case was tanking, Wilkins proceeded to fake a heart attack. Me, I need some time. Judge Mary Catherine Huffman kept it cool despite having been dealing with Wilkins' disruptive behavior, chided him for his foolhardy attempt to cause a mistrial. Your behavior will not cause a mistrial. Sir, in five minutes, I'm going to start again, with or without you. And eventually oh, sentenced him to 42 years. Number three, Michael Shit. Madison's smile to smile while a father tearfully testifies on the torture and murder of his daughter is nothing short of pure evil. As Van Terry addressed defendant Michael Madison, who was responsible for the death and mutilation of Van Terry's daughter, wow. Shabanda, and two other victims, Shatisa wow. Shiri and Life. Angela Deskins, the cold-blooded killer smirked. Catching the slyness, Van Terry reacted as any grieving father should by lunging at the grinning killer. Fuck you, yeah, boy. Get us off. Get us off. Get him. Fuck him. Get us off. Get us off. In the chaos that ensued, the two were removed from the courtroom. But when the trial resumed, Madison was sentenced to death. Number two. I don't want. I was about to clap, but I haven't. I haven't even lied. I was about to clap, but I don't want to clap for nobody dying. But nah, man. That's fucked up, man. Pardon my language. That's messed up, man. People are here sick, man. Pain's sentencing. 
In February of 2012, T.J. Lane made headlines by opening fire in a Chardon, Ohio school cafeteria, killing three students. Throughout the trial, Lane proved that he was pretty proud of himself and his actions and showed no remorse, but it was during his sentencing that... I bet you, he probably... I would say he probably get life. Probably, because he's still young. He maybe got, I know he can get death, though. His blasé attitude truly it. shined through. Wearing a plain white shirt with the killer. word killer scribed on the front, Lane used his last words before his sentence was delivered to gouge open the wounds of the victim's families. As spectators reeled from the heartless words, Judge David Fury condemned Lane to three life sentences without the possibility of yeah. parole. Number one, Michael Moran's final sentence. Okay, As a lawyer and Wall Street trader, Michael James Moran enjoyed success. After purchasing a 10,000 square foot mansion in 2008, Moran attempted to sell it for a profit in 2009 via a lottery. But once the lottery was deemed illegal, he implemented Plan B. The day after the lottery was oh. to take place, Moran called 911 to report that the mansion was on fire. Okay, what's your emergency? Yeah, my house is on fire. Are you going to be able to get out? And during the follow-up investigation, all blame for the fire pointed back to him. In May of 2012, hearings started for his arson charges, and after hearing the guilty verdict, Moran ingested a cyanide capsule he oh, had snuck man. into the courtroom. Moments later, he was convulsing on the floor, dying from his own lethal ingestion. Well, there you have it. Thanks for watching. Oh, if the man. fact is that you enjoyed this video, then give it a like. Leave a comment below. And remember to okay. click the bell to be notified every time the team at Top 10 Archive... Okay, okay, okay. That's enough. That's enough. Enough advertising for y'all. Free advertising. No free advertising around here, bro. Cut that shit up. But that's crazy, though. That, that dude with the killer? I hope you're watching this. I don't feel bad. I don't feel bad for you, bro. Really don't. Like, you would try... You really would do some of that. You would rub it in their face, right? Crazy world we live in. Y'all, please, be safe. Be safe. Protect your loved ones. Hold them. Hug them. All that good stuff, man. But, if you guys enjoyed the video, smash the like button. Subscribe. Comment. All that good stuff down below in the comment section. Anything you want me to react to, I'll try my best to get on this as soon as possible. Alright? With that being said, my name is Ari. Until we meet again, remember the world is yours. Peace. I'm out.